Johnny, last year you had a baptism of fire in the Solitaire du Figaro, um, and now you're about to start this year's race. What did you learn from last year? Well, I, w I went into it very green last year, and um, you know a lot of sailing under my belt, but not not of that type uh, in that class and with that level of competition and closeness. So um, it was really difficult, and I learned that I didn't have enough experience to be to, to be doing it at that level. So um, yeah, I've been busy this winter getting as much training under my belt as possible, both in the south of France um, at the Mediterranean School in Le Grand Motte, and uh, now in the first few regattas up here in, in Brittany. In November time, moved down Lock, Sock and Barrel down to uh, Le Grand Motte, south coast of, uh, south of France, uh, to a training school where we were training week on, week off. So we'd have one week sailing, one week off, with between four and eight boats. Uh, and, and just, you know, manoeuvres on the whistle, start after start after start after start, coastal races, all sorts, uh, you, you name it. We, we were busy, busy, busy. And there's nothing better than being in a one design, being racing against each other, you know. I made, wasn't the way it turned out last year. I, I had no real sailing against other boats, so you're guessing about boat speed and you know the manoeuvres are okay. But until you're actually day in day out speed testing, um, you're really sort of punching around in the dark. Figaro mm -hmm. is a great fun to sail, um, it, even in breeze. You know, it's amazing. I, I, when I first got on the boats last year, I couldn't imagine sailing in 40 knots of breeze with the big spinnaker and full main and jiving, or, or let, yet alone doing a, a, a sausage course on, on your own. But you get to learn that the boats are very strong, very, uh, very reliable, and it's really down to how far you can push it yourself. So um, they're, they're great fun. They're not hugely fast, certainly coming off a 60. Uh, you know, you potter along at six and a half, seven knots upwind. Um, it takes a long time to get anywhere. But that's, for me, that's not the interesting bit. The interesting bit is the, is the pro uh, close proximity to other boats and the type yeah. of racing. It's a shame for me to be the only Brit uh, this year. Last year I had Nigel there. And you know it's great to have a bit of camaraderie and you know a bit of flying the flag for our country. So this year, yeah, I'm the only Brit. There's a, I think there's only five foreigners in total. Um, and I don't know why that is. I think I think it's largely because not, not many people know about the class, or they don't know how incredible the events are, or or really, I guess most importantly from my perspective, how it, it is good training and good preparation for um, moving on to bigger and bigger classes and more difficult fleets. It's because there's no real awareness of the class here it is difficult to get into the focus is definitely on France um, so I'm, I'm lucky to have a sponsor who who wants to um, you know put me through that kind of training which is I'm very lucky and it's difficult for people to get the money when when uh, the focus is is not in England well this year obviously hoping for a significantly better result than last year I put a lot of time and effort into it over the winter and um, I hope it pays dividends you know for, there's 48 boats I think sailing um, the level is really high. You know, this, year, this year there are only six bezus, which is uh, a novice. So what I was last year, there were 16. So but there are only six, and those guys are very good. So the level is, I, I think, higher than last year. So, so it's hard to, hard to look down the list and say, I'll beat him, I'll beat him, I'll beat him. But I'd like to, be, you know, top 30 yeah. is, is realistic, you know. Yeah. Well, the Artemis Academy, I think, is something that's been necessary for a long time. Um, and, and I'm, you know, we're so amazed that Artemis have, 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 have want to go along with that, and they see an, uh, some benefit. You know, really, it's something that will, will start generating young sailors. So hopefully, we can have a Vendée winner. Um, you know, in, in 10 years' time, it's, it's that's the reality of it. It's not going to happen overnight. We've got a lot to learn from the French, and you know, we're not we're not starting this academy thinking we're going to win the Figaro next season. It's nothing nothing like that. You know, it's going to take a long time, like the Olympics have developed over the past 15 years to the point where they're very, very good now in the squad. That's what we're starting now. And, um, you know, for me, I wish we'd had the opportunity 15 years ago to do something like this. But it's very exciting. Um, it's incredible of Artemis. You know, they've spent so much time, effort and money in, in developing UK sailing. And this is, the, this is the next step for them. So we're going to be, all be working really hard to try and, uh, and push out some young guys who are capable of doing good things in the future. The, the academy is open pretty much to everyone. We know we're not just looking for young people. We're looking for people who, who want to come and get stuck in and involved. And you know, we're looking for talented sailors, but we're also, um, you know, we're looking to develop people in, in terms of sailing skills. So we're looking for the right mentality. You can pull those people from everywhere and anywhere, whatever age. Um, for, for the young guys and girls from everywhere, from you know, the dinghy squads, Olympic squads, yacht clubs, everywhere and anywhere. 
we've now got a, a different pass that they can take. You know, that's the dinghy, dinghy sailing is one side, racing uh, or training for the Olympics is one, one other element. And now we've got a completely different, it's an offshore academy and it's uh, grassroots, uh, it's a good place to start. Mm. And it's really difficult, you know, I know, I know that because that's how I've come into it. You have to be quite lucky and in the right place at the right time and do everything right to, to, to get a foot on the offshore ladder. Mm -hmm. um, and the academy is another way of helping people to achieve that. Um, we've got four training boats and my race boat, which is over in France, ready for the solitaire. And they've literally gone in the water this week and we've just been, uh, the last two days, just um, running them in. They're going to be racing Cows Week with um, some of the young guys who hopefully be selected for the academy and some Artemis guests and um, clients. So those four boats um, will be based both here and probably down in, in Weymouth, using the, in Portland, using the uh, facilities down there. And we've, we've got a link also with the south of France um, training camp and probably for the winter the boats will go down there. So, you know, we, we, we've, got, we've got access to four boats and we, we intend to do all we can to, to get people trained up and um, get on the ladder. So how much pressure do you feel under going into something like the Figaro? This year you're looking for better results. Sponsors obviously want results. Yep. You know, how much pressure does that put on you as a sailor? I, I, I like racing. <laughs> and, and everything's pressure, you know, and if I do badly, uh, first and foremost, I, I'm, I'm angry and, and upset with myself. You know, I, I want to go out there and do well. I put a lot of pressure on myself to do well, but you've got to turn that pressure into spirit and fight and motivation to, you know, to get out there and, and, and keep going. Mm. Last year was a really difficult um, time for me. You know, it, I didn't, I wasn't as competitive as I should have been for the solitaire and there's two ways you can react. You can say let the pressure get to you or you can come back fighting and you know that's that's the way I attack it really. And, how, and on the race course how do you how do you manage what must be the most difficult thing you know the, the exhaustion? Well that, I mean that was one thing last year uh, managing myself which uh, coming off such long races as I've done before you think two or three days is you know it's easy I'm not gonna not gonna struggle with that um, and I didn't really sleep or look after myself enough so it leads to bad judgment you know you're not focused the whole time and I've been working really hard on that over the winter to try and um, make sure that I look after myself. I think a lot of that comes with uh, confidence and, and um, being comfortable with the boat, which I'm a lot more now. You know, last year I'd sit up and watch the numbers and just keep tweaking and fiddling, probably waste eight, eight hours where I could have, if I wanted to, slept completely soundly. I mean, I'm not going to do that, but I'm looking for 10 minute sleeps as often as possible this time. Um, it's what the good guys do. They've, they, they're more comfortable, more relaxed with the boat, you know, and um, it does pay dividends. And I won't be making that same mistake this year. Now, I'm told you just got married. Yes, indeed. <laughs> how, how are you fitting in marriage <laughs> with this sailing schedule? Well, it's been fairly hectic, I have to say. I um, can't remember. We got back from Quiberon Regatta, almost went straight to France, got married, had two days off, went straight back here, took the boat to La Havre, so we haven't really had a, we had two days, I had to call it a mini moon um, because the honeymoon has to come later, I've been told. So. Now what about your future in the sport? You're in the Figaro at the moment. What are your hopes for the future? Well, it's, it's hard to know really. You know, I've got unfinished business with the Vendée. For me, it's, um, it's an incredible experience and I, I want to finish that. Um, I don't know how or when at the moment, but we'll see. Um, my focus for now is, is the Figaro and this, this will be my first real season and I'm loving it. So for me, I could really, I, I want to be able to do well and pull out some good results. So, you know, certainly next season, I'll be looking to do the same if, um, if it pans out, if I'm lucky enough to do that. And, you know, doubling back on the 60, uh, we've got round Britain race just after, well, two days after the solitaire finishes, uh, I'll be on the 60. So um, got lots of, lots of dreams and ambitions, but right now I'm just focusing on what we've got coming up.